to now we're getting ready for using the Tetraploid map software and we have the, the link here from where you can download this. It's um, you need to use Windows XP software at this time. Um, and it was originally designed to be used with AFLPs and SSR markers. And as I mentioned earlier, that there's uh, the maximum right now is 800 markers, but Christine Hackett's expanding this so that it can handle a larger number. And on a per chromosome basis or linkage group, you only can use a maximum of 50. And they also state in the software it's not effective for markers with double reduction. So uh, we have to um, remove that. Now, this is where I, I feel that the, having this, the potato genome sequence uh, prior to this mapping work has helped us. By, by doing the diploid mapping work, we were able to see the concordance between the, the SNPs in the diploid population and then the, and then the potato browser. So we can use the position of the SNPs on the pseudomolecules as a way of organizing our data um, in tetraploid map for doing our analyses. Uh, without that, we would be having to do things on a random basis, which would really slow the analysis process uh, down. So, uh, so Joe Coombs has been the person that's been uh, diving into the into this software and handling all of the data for the for the tetraploid map. And uh, so Joe's going to take over here and kind of walk you through some of the work that he's done in the tetraploid map. Thank you, Dave. Um, so uh, as Dave was saying, tetraploid map is um, probably one of the only or you know, widely available, freely available tetraploid mapping software programs out there. And this was really our first work using that software and incorporating the SNP markers in the program. And we wanted to just give a little bit more background on how we worked with our data to bring that into Tetraploid Map and what we were seeing with some of the initial results. With working with the SNP markers, uh, we began by uh, recoding um, the five cluster calling so that it would go into the um, numbering format for the Tetraploid Map software. And this table uh, is just an example. Um, we're working with the data originally out of Excel, but this is a list of the SNP names. And um, since we have the pseudomolecule information, we had already incorporated the pseudomolecule chromosome and position. And then you can see the two parents, uh, Premier Russet and Rio Grande, and then a sample of the progeny. So when we were recoding, first we were looking at those 800 uh, simplex by nulliplex SNPs. And so we would recode an AAAB by, or an AAA as a 1 and a 0 as basically coding it as a dominant marker for a tetraploid map. And then um, when you do have missing calls, they're recoded as a 9. So we were doing that with uh, no calls or with uh, calls that were double reduction products. Um, when we were bringing in the, the marker data, it has some formatting requirements, and so the, the data is laid out. So you begin with the number of progeny that are being put into the, the project. And in this instance, we had 184, and that does not include the two parents. So there are a total of 186 genotype calls that were being incorporated. And then the number of markers that are being put into a project. And so here you can see there are 46. And this was looking at one parent, the premier russet, for a single chromosome, chromosome 1. And we had broken these out to work at a single chromosome parent at a time in tetraploid map so that we, when we got to the marker ordering stage, we would be under the limit for the ordering numbers. Um, next, you just have the marker name here. And then this is the, the number of alleles to expect. And in this case, it was one. And then these are the actual genotypic calls for the parent one, parent two, and then the progeny. So um, the tetraploid map software is actually a, a very inclusive software package. And once you incorporate your marker data, you can use the software for cluster analysis and 
on that marker ordering and then also QTL analysis. And I didn't want to go into a lot of detail, but um, just to kind of direct people to the webinar that is currently already available online. Um, Christine Hackett is one of the developers of the software and uh, she had put on a very nice workshop in the SOLCAP workshop for the Potato Association of America meetings in 2010 and the link is here for people to go and get more in-depth background on using the Tetraploid map software. So after we incorporated the markers from our first parent premier russet chromosome 1, we were able to do marker ordering and we had the overall uh, marker order that had come out of Tetraploid map software. And then just as a reference point, we wanted to see how the genetic map positions compared with the pseudomolecule. And this is an example of chromosome 1 for premier russet from this the tetraploid cross. And on the left side here, we're looking at the genetic position that came out of tetraploid map compared to the physical position on the pseudomolecule. And you can see there's a nice correlation there. And then um, referencing one of the two diploid populations, we were also seeing the same uh, thing from the diploid map where we're looking at the genetic position from the DM by RH population compared to the physical position. So it was nice to see a good correlation for that marker set coming out of tetraploid map. So after we had the marker ordering, uh, we were moving forward to do the QTL analysis and uh, there's also a little bit of formatting of the data that needs to be done for the phenotypic data that goes into tetraploid map. Um, in this instance, uh, we start with the number of traits that were being entered. We had 21 different traits. And then it's just a list of the progeny. And this corresponds, of course, to the same progeny order that were put in for the genotypes. And then uh, the different trait names and the, the data for those traits. And in this instance, any uh, missing data is coded as a minus 99. In order to do the QTL analysis, you need to um, call the, the chromosome um, for each one of the markers individually. And uh, there's more information, again, from the workshop that Christine Hackett had given. but basically working through each individual SNP at a time, looking at the whether the SNP is in coupling or repulsion, and determine the chromosome for the parent that it's on. And so in this example, um, these first three markers were um, arbitrarily assigned chromosome 1, and then this next one was found to be linked in repulsion, so we put that on chromosome 2 and so on until you're able to call the different chromosomes for each one of those SNP markers. So after doing that, we're able to see not only the overall position on the, for chromosome 1, but then actually each one of the four different chromosomes in that parent. So we will have a map not only for each parent and chromosome, but the actual four different chromosomes of each one of those parents. <laughs>